All right, so as some of you already know, we are trying to breed variable kings and milk snakes for the first time this year, mainly because we were surrendered a bunch of adults, especially fat adults, so breeding would strip a layer of fat and actually be good for them. So we're gonna go through, it's kind of egg laying season right now. Yeah. So we're gonna go through, check all of our variable kings. Isn't that a male? No, uh, female. Yep, female. I don't think this one's actually gravid though. I don't mm. really see much widening on the lower third, which is what we're looking for is like, a thick body on the lower third. Oh, this one's too young, actually. Yeah, we didn't yeah. breed you, sorry. Uh, this is one we bred. Oh yeah, th this one. Oh, yeah. This one's gravid. Can oh, yeah. you see how round her body is, especially on the lower third? You can kind of see, I mean, it might, it takes a, a trained eye, but she's definitely thicker on this lower, even just half, it looks like with her, the eggs kind of go all the way up there. Yeah. But she feels thicker, she feels rounder too. Yeah. So sometimes, to confirm if they're gravid or not, we'll just take a snake and let them slither through our hands and you can feel plumpness, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Uh, who else do we have? Did we bred you? Oh, we bred you. That That's right. Fat. This one's oh. really fat. So hopefully um, she's gravid. I can't tell if she's gravid or look at those hips. Yeah. I think she's just, really, just really fat. fat. Well, you should breed because it'll help you lose weight. I don't remember one being that thick at the hips, but yeah, maybe. I don't maybe. Know. How nice about you? This one does have a lay box because, oh, oh, oh my gosh. She had eggs. Nice. This isn't one of the variable kings either. This is a milk snake. Oh, it's a Pueblin. We have Pueblin milk snake eggs. Aw, it's the first time we've ever produced milk snakes. Oh, all right, I guess I'll peek. Oh wait, all the others are males. Nope, except for one, which we didn't breed. Yeah. Okay, so all right. that's all the variable kings and milks. Looks like we might she, have a couple variable kings on the way. Did she get them out? Oh, look how depleted oh, she is there. She's got the wrinkles. Hi, pretty girl. Oh, wow. Yeah, that definitely helped her lose weight because she was on the thick <laughs> side too. Wow, you're get like them a- all out? Yeah, she got them all out. You're a good weight now, girl. I'm just gonna take this. Yeah, we'll take your babies and we'll just put you back. Let's go take a closer look. Oh right. my gosh. We got the new babies in here. First milk snakes yeah. ever. I mean, we wanted to breed them because we've always wanted to breed milk snakes, but also because they were fat, so it's like, it's good for them, and now we have eggs. That's a lot of little eggs, too. Yeah, from that size, Two, milk three, snakes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, eleven. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I count eleven. Aww. One shy of a dozen. Are they just all? Ah, they're all one big clump. I Look at that. I think this year is just going to be the year of clumps. The year of clumps. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Okay, well, I guess we'll put them in incubation. You got a bin now. I have a bin. Yeah. So these are iris bins, by the way. Not a sponsor, but we just really like these bins. Yeah. They work great for eggs, and they stack well, and they seem to slide into the shelves on our incubator really well, too. Yep. And now that we don't have to worry about space, since we have a ginormous incubator, when the little one fills up, we can use these for, like, everything. Yeah. We don't have to use a sour cream container, because <laughs> We're so low on space yeah. anymore. It's wonderful. We're finally moving up in the world. All right, anyway, here's our container. Here's our perlite. That, well, no. Uh, I think it's the right amount. I'm getting good at this. Perfect it's amount. A little wet, but. Clump test, good, didn't drain. Yeah, I think, I'm gonna say it's the perfect amount. All right, now we just take this clump of eggs. Do we want to separate them at all? Oh no, they are no. stuck. Never mind. There is going to be no separating of these eggs. She must have had those yesterday sometime. She must have. There we go. We'll cushion them in. Look at these milk snake eggs. I can't believe it. We'll add a new species to the list. All right. Ta-da! All <laughs> comfy and cozy in their bed of perlite. And now we have to mark all the eggs. So we have milk snake eggs. Do you think we should do like Milk products. That'd be good. Yeah, like cheese and cheese milk. And milk and, and ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah, let's do that. Is yogurt a milk a dairy product? I think so. I think it's considered a dairy product. Uh, let's go with it. Let's, let's say yes. It. Yeah. So we could do like milk and chocolate milk and two percent milk and whole milk and whole milk. <laughs> okay, we'll start it off with this. The cheese. Nope. It's one of the school lunch milks. It's a carton of milk. I like how Emily's been using writing on the egg to tell what it is this year. <laughs> yes, because my drawings aren't as good as they have been in the past, <laughs> I think. All right. Cheese. You like Swiss cheese. Okay. Perfect. Swiss, Swiss cheese. cheese. How about this? Is that a dude? It's a gallon oh, of milk. Okay. Yeah, a gallon it looks like of milk. A torso. Oh, does it? <laughs> I guess with teeny little short legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what else is milk? There she goes writing again. <laughs> it's supposed to say Hershey. It's a chocolate bar. Oh. That's a milk product, right? I mean, it's milk chocolate. Yeah, I guess. exactly. How about this? 
Poop cone. Yep, a poop cone. Nice. That's a milk product. Yeah. Okay, I have another one. Can you guess it? Uh, it, bean? It's a cheese curd. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. Okay, here's another one. I'm surprised you haven't done like coffee with milk in it. Oh, that would have been good. American cheese. Yes, it's a yeah. slice of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? It's something you eat when you're a kid. You eat that when you're a kid? It's supposed to be string cheese. Oh. <laughs> it, it looks more like a leek now. Yes, it does. <laughs> so you eat that when you're an adult. That's right. Can you guess what that is? It looks like one of those cups you put condiments in. Close. It's a cup of creamer. Oh, so yeah. you stole my idea. I did. Is it not dairy creamer though? Because that doesn't count. Oh no, it's definitely dairy creamer <laughs> because then it's a milk product. Oh, okay, good. Of course. I think you have one more I that you can do. Draw on. How about this? Ping pong paddle. Nope. An udder. Yeah. I mean, an udder is not a milk product. It's it where milk comes milk from. Milk products. It's an udder, and it's, it counts. It's what milk snakes are sneaking into barns to steal the milk from. Yeah. Did you guys not know that? Okay. So the reason why milk snakes are called milk snakes is because a long time ago, when farmers first saw them in the wild, they actually found them in their barns, and they saw the milk snakes near the cows' hooves. So they figured. Oh my gosh, there's a snake near my cows. It must be stealing their milk overnight while I sleep. So let's call it the milk snake and let's kill them all because they're stealing from us. And that's why they're called milk snakes. Were the corn snakes named corn snakes because they were stealing corn? No, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> you would think so, but no. <laughs> But we got wise before the corn snake was <laughs> they did. They figured out, hmm, oh, snakes really like mice. It's not <laughs> anything to do with our, pro our, our crop. Uh, so yeah, that's where milk snakes get yeah. their name. And we have all but we one. We have our dairy clutch. Yeah, there's one down here. We'll just, it's white like milk. There yeah. we go. That's what we're it's doing. It's like a cheese curd. Yeah, yeah, the whole egg itself looks no. like a cheese curd from the Ellsworth Creamery. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, that's yep. all of them. All right, now. Go and drop them in incubation. Oh, yeah. wait, you have to label it first. Yes. So we've got that clutch. This is from, we have to name her. She doesn't have a name yet. Yeah, we need a good milk punny name. Pway, is that a B? There we go, Pueblo milk. And on five, three. Nice. Hooray! Yeah. And into I, incubation? Into incubation. In the incubator, ta-da! What's next to them? Next to them is- All oh, pythons? No, that's that's wrong. It's the Jesus clutch, ah. which there's only two left. Uh, we'll see if they end up hatching. I don't know if they will. It's hard not having a dad. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, this incubator is going to get filled up quick. You realize yes, that? It is. We only have room for like six more clutches. Yeah. Then so, we get to move to this one. Oh, look at that sex man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then there's you in there too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. What you doing? I am looking for variable king snake eggs because the Pueblin milk snake had eggs. And I'm hoping to have variable king snake eggs too, but I don't think. That's a male. This one's a male? Oh, no. But they're both females. Oh, it was a male at one time. Yeah, yeah, then we <laughs> probed it and, and it ended up being a female. Yeah, females, but oh, no that eggs. Oh, shed. Ooh, maybe. It was deep in shed. Prelay shed? Maybe. Damn. Damn. But another. Female that hasn't laid yet, which was close, but was close, was Kate actually. Kate? Oh! oh. <laughs> what the? Oh, God. Okay. That There's looks just sluggy. A single egg under her Is cork. There any in here? That's so weird. She's in her lay box. Oh, there's one. Oh, that looks good. So great. we have a slug and a one. And a. Okay. Oh, okay. nope, there's a second one. Seriously? Oh yep. yeah, there's another slug. But I think that's just a slug. All right, well that's, uh, looks like one good egg. All right, well we can take a look. So, Kate. Hey, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean, oh, there's multiple slugs in here. Oh. Whoa, Kate, are you done laying? I mean, it looks like you are, I don't this feel. This is a slug, for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely a slug. So that's her slug before she found her lay box. Kate, what did you do? Why did you only have slugs? Did you lay just Ooh, slugs? She looks like she's still got some in her. You think so? Yeah. Oh, I thought she felt... Oh, never mind. I just yeah, felt one there. Yeah, she's still got some in here. Oh, okay, I will set you back. I'm just going to take this one good egg and close that up. Yes. All right. Well, it looks like we have one egg that is white enough to maybe be fertile and yeah. good. So I guess I'll just poke a little hole in here. I will bounce this one while you do that. <laughs> the slug test. Yep. Nice. All right, we have one little happy egg. What are we going to mark it with so we know which side is up? Should we do a... Uh, you know what? This egg is just happy to be here. Happy face. Perfect. There we go. All, All right. right, well uh, then. Goodbye, little slug. Yep. Ah, uh, there it goes. Kate, you lay the rest of your eggs. Can put her back. Uh, what I, I, I did feel when I like palpated her, like when I ran my thumb underneath her belly, it felt like a, 
solid egg, which usually means it's a slug. Yeah. So I think we only have one good egg from her this year, unfortunately. But as long as she lays them all, yes. slugs or not, that's all we need. So we're gonna put her back. Do we have any others in here someplace that's like multiple or any other like eggs? Actually, yeah, to I've, been add keeping, to this video? I've been keeping an eye on the indigos. We oh, this is a male. I don't need to look at this one. <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> He's not gonna lay any no, eggs. No, he's not gonna lay any eggs. But this one was really close, actually. I, or at least I think it was laying soon. It seemed to be in, uh, displaying some behavior that seemed she like nesting. It? She's back there right now. I mean, it's pretty late right oh, now. Okay. But so she's not even in her lay box, but oh! Oh, look at that. Oh, are mm, those? Those look sluggy. Weird, look at this one. It's like pinched in the middle. It's like what the MBK did. Yeah, actually. One, two, three, four, five. That's so weird. These are so squishy and like bouncy that these are slugs. These four for sure. Look at this egg. It's huge. That is huge. And it feels like calcified almost. That's so strange. Should we like incubate it just in case? Maybe we could throw all four of those, all five of those in with this hog nose. Well, I mean, I think these four are definitely slugs. Yeah, but incubate till there's no debate. They're so squishy. I don't yeah. even want to. If they're okay. this bad, if you incubate a very sluggy egg, it seems to attract gnats, which can sometimes mm. cause you to lose other eggs. So these are sluggy enough. I mean, just look at the squish and the yellowness. I All think right. we should just toss those. But this one, which rolled over, I just realized, uh, this one is taut. It feels like a water balloon. Mm. Yeah. I see, they see feel different. Yeah. So maybe this one will make it. I don't know. So we're gonna end this video with two eggs that Probably won't make it. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, these can all just go in here. Goodbye. Goodbye, slugs. Oh. Hi, possibly good eggs, maybe. What should we mark on this egg to give it the best Question chance? Question mark. <laughs> okay. I can't even draw Jeez. on this. What? He's the Riddler. This is like drawing on sandpaper, like really coarse. Oh, it's like the Joker and the Riddler. This. That's so weird, I've never drawn on an egg like that before. It's so rough. It's like drawing on sandpaper. Oh, weird, right? yeah, it is like sandpaper. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. That's, oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, DC number four. Girl, that must have hurt coming out. I am so sorry. Okay, well, I'm gonna give you your lay box back. Just in case. And so it's a human hide. They see, the yeah. indigos seem to really appreciate or at least benefit from having a human hide, whether or not they're laying eggs. So here you go. Yep, have a human hide. And we'll throw these guys in incubation. Yeah. All right. Well, DC number four and Kate, each with one, one egg, <laughs> a single egg one clutch. One questionable egg. It's so weird. What a weird yeah. combination. An indigo well, and a Kate hog Well, might have more. I don't know. We'll see. That's but true. If yeah. she does, we'll end up probably putting that in a different video. Yeah, true. Yeah. All right. Well, into the incubator, I guess. Um, you can go down here. Perfect. Oh, it's filling up. It is. We might have to turn on this one soon. Ooh. Well, we got milk snake eggs and one hognose <laughs> egg and one questionable eastern indigo egg. I mean, we technically got four. Just... Or five, well, but four were Yeah, bad. four were definitely So slugs. she ovulated, just like Kate did. That's true, yeah. So I think the problem was we just missed the breeding or the pairing window with the Eastern Indigos. Because one of our other females laid slugs earlier this yep. year too. We just didn't film them. But we're getting closer to producing yes. Eastern Indigos, which is like a holy grail in the snake world. So hopefully we will get there someday, even if it's not this she year. She got them all out, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yep, got them all out, at least that's the important thing. Yep. So even if that one egg doesn't hatch this year, that's okay. We got two females to ovulate, so maybe next year they will actually hatch. There we go. So we'll see. But yeah, Eastern Indigo Egg, Hognose Egg, and Pueblin Milk Snake Eggs for the very first time here at Snake Discovery. So a couple, a couple firsts. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support, as always. And let's keep our fingers crossed that both Kate's egg and DC number four, the Eastern Indigo's egg, end up hatching. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Look at that mean looking face. <laughs> yes. Everyone says Eastern Indigos are smart, like the Einstein of snakes. Nah. They're not smart. She At tries least captive bred ones. All of our Eastern Indigos try to eat their water bowls. They try to eat their caves. They love food, but they are not smart.